Hey there, it's Marley. Welcome back to my booktube channel. Today, I am filming my February TBR. The way we are picking a bunch of the books I'm gonna read is going to be through my tarot cards. I've done this before a few times. Basically what I do is I pull two cards per book based on the two cards. I pick a book that sounds like it might be similar to the vibes of the cards. So stay tuned for that. But first of all, I'm gonna talk about the three books I've already planned to read for my monthly reading vlog, which I normally hide the theme, but it's pretty obvious what it's gonna be. It's basically a romance reading vlog for the month of February. It's kind of what I've been doing the last few years, just kind of in celebration of Valentine's Day and celebration of love. So the romances that I want to get to are Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is a relatively new release from her and it is her first YA book. Although I did hear it's actually pretty like smutty for a YA. What I know is that this has to do with chess. It seems like our two main characters are kind of competing in, in this chess world, in these chess tournaments. So we have kind of that rivals to lover energy, which she always kind of does. I always enjoy Allie Hazelwood's romances, except for, <laughs> except for one, which really pissed me off, but it had to do with things not related to the romance. I always do like the chemistry between her two main characters and the banter and all that. So I'm of course excited to read her new release. Then I would like to read Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. So I've read a few of Ashley's thriller books and quite enjoyed them. So I would like to give her romance books a try. I did hear that this one is a little bit more like contemporary literary fiction than it is romance, but it does seem to have a very big romance uh, plot point. It seems like it's a second chance romance from what I can get. I, it sounds like it's a little bit political. I don't know. I feel like I've heard a little bit of mixed things about this, but because I love her writing and her thrillers, I definitely want to give this a go. The third one I really am excited about is The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. This is of course the follow-up to The Soulmate Equation, which I did not really enjoy, but it features my favorite character from the first book, which is Fizzy. She was the best friend in the first book and now she's our lead in this one. She's a romance writer. Even though she writes so much about romance, she has never really had her own great epic love. Of, right? So she has approached to be on this reality show, like a dating reality show, obviously similar to The Bachelor or Bachelorette. And then I think she ends up falling in love with like the guy that's running the show. So sounds like it could be fun. I've read a few reality dating show books. I don't think any of them have really blown me away, but it is always kind of a fun trope to include. Those are the romance books I want to get to. Now for picking the rest of my books, we're going to use my tarot cards like I mentioned before and I'll link below any of my other like tarot related videos that I've done over the years uh, in the description if you like this idea. But basically this is my Labyrinth tarot deck. If you guys are fans of the movie Labyrinth like I am, that's the deck that I am using. And sorry, this is the cover of, of the deck. Beautiful. And I think I'm gonna do three books. I am traveling a little bit in February, so not sure how much I'll be able to read. And it is a bit of a shorter month. So I'll just do three books from here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull two cards and based on these cards, I'll pick a book. So the first card we have is King of Feathers. <laughs> <laughs> with the owl and then the second one is I guess the five of something sorry these labyrinth decks are a little bit different than the typical ones okay so first off king of feathers let's see what this card means Okay, King of Feathers, cunning, tactical, and intelligent. The King of Feathers is a powerful leader. Renowned for his fierce determination, he stops at nothing to reach his goals. This card is the sign that logic and reason is called for now. Don't let emotions get in your way. So I'm thinking we need to read about a character who has these qualities, who's very cunning, intelligent, will do whatever they need to do to reach their goals. So we'll keep that in mind. Then this card, Okay, this is from the suit Junk. <laughs> So it's the 10 of junk. And this one means wealth, legacy, and the achievement of material aspirations. You've worked hard to get where you are today and you're enjoying the abundance and st stability you've created in your life. Kind of goes along with the first card because it's about wealth and achievement. And the first card is about like a character who's like desperate and will do anything to like 
achieve things so i'm getting like an overall vibe for this so now let's study my physical tbr and non-physical tbrs and see what we get okay here's what i think i'm gonna do i don't know how excited i am about this but it's on my physical tbr which is good that is all of our demise by amanda foodie and cl herman so this is the sequel to all of us villains it's a ya fantasy series that i started last year so this is a duology so it's the second and final book so at least i'll be able to finish off this series but basically it's a magical competition where we're following all these people from these magical families and every 20 years or so they have to choose like a champion to enter in this magical magical competition to see who will like win the most powerful magic or something from what i'm remembering i think it's been like a year since i read the first book but i think this fits for our two cards because we of course have these characters who are really willing to do whatever they can to win this competition and get magic which would be wealth in this world and so i think this kind of fits with the cards that i pulled and it'll be good to finish off this series the reason i don't know how excited i really am is because i did give the book four stars which is pretty good but i did read a little bit more of amanda foodie's writing in the last year and her last book i read did disappoint me a little bit so we'll see how this goes all right now let's pick two more cards so we have the seven of feathers and then we have i guess this is six of junk now so let's see what these mean okay seven of feathers the labyrinth is full of sneaky surprises the seven of feathers represents trickery and deception don't take things at face value now stay vigilant remember things aren't always what they seem okay so i think maybe we could again pick a book that has a character like this like who's very sneaky or we pick a book that i know is a mystery and is gonna have twists and like surprises that deceive you so that's what i'm thinking from that card then for six of junk it's a call for generosity if you're in a place of abundance this card advises you to be charitable and share your wealth with others however if you're the one in need the six of junk serves as a reminder to not be afraid to ask for help i don't really know what this one would mean i guess we're following like a generous character maybe or something with asking for help i don't know let's see what i can find okay after looking at my physical tbr this is what my instinct said should go with i'm kind of taking advantage of these cards to pick sequels apparently i have the brothers hawthorne by jennifer lynn barnes on my tbr here and i feel like this could fit the cards because first of all if you don't know this is kind of a continuation of the inheritance game series which is a ya mystery series that i really enjoyed and it has to do with riddles and as i said mysteries and stuff so i think that could fit the card that was talking about deception and lies and made me think i should pick like a thriller or like something with twists so i think it could check off that but at the same time i think it could also fit for the second card that was talking about like generosity and was kind of like a nice card <laughs> because this thriller is not going to be about like evil characters i don't think because we're following grayson and jameson from the original series who are both characters that i love you know they're they're good characters <laughs> obviously there are probably like villainous characters in this but at least knowing we're following like nice characters to start i think it kind of fits for the cards so that's great continuing another series and now for the final book that i'm gonna pick so this looks like it is the six of pots which is another suit in this deck and then oh another pot it looks like the three of pots so these might both be similar if they're both from pots let's see okay six of pots represents nostalgia reunions and simple childlike happiness this card invites you to reconnect with the simple things in life that make you truly happy it also suggests you may soon be reconnecting with someone important from your past this card is screaming that i should reread something <laughs> that's pretty blatant but i don't really want to reread when i have so many books on my tbr i'm not a big rereader so the other interpretation could be like for some reason finding a book that is still nostalgic for me even though it's not a reread so i'll have to think about that <laughs> okay for three of pots it represents friendships and harmonious collaborations inspiration will come from getting together with others this is a great time to host a brainstorming session and let the creativity flow 
free freely so basically friendship collaboration so something that's like a bit more of like a happier book obviously that's also nostalgic for me okay i think i found i think i found the perfect book for this that i don't need to reread okay i was born for this by alice oseman which i know i haven't hauled yet because i just bought this book but i think it's perfect so this is about a character who's obsessed with this pop rock trio of teenage boys aka kind of like a boy band and then also we're following i guess the front man of the band and then they end up like being thrust together and i don't know having a relationship a friendship can't remember what people have said about this book by Alice o Oseman in particular, but I am trying to read all of her backlist because I just adore her books. I give all her books five stars so far. The reason I think it fits for the nostalgic card, I think all of Alice Oseman's books are a little bit nostalgic for me. I feel like we're around the same age. Her books like take place around the time when I was a teen, like the Tumblr era. So that's nostalgic for me. Also the whole like boy band thing. I was very into, you know, One Direction and that was the main boy band i was into but i was i was there for that moment you know so that's a bit nostalgic and then the i think the other card was about like friendship and collaboration very much giving that as well this is definitely gonna have to do with friendship between the band and the fans and collaboration between the bands and whatever so i just think this actually is perfect so that's great i'm getting through another book on my physical tbr which i'm not necessarily prioritizing as much as i was last year where i was really trying to read my physical tbr but this just so happens that this month i seem to have books that fit all of these little prompts i have given myself from tarot so i think this works and this should be fun all right so that's gonna be my tbr for february let me know what you think let me know what you think of this whole tarot thing and if i should keep doing it and and if you agree with the books that I picked. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've not subscribed already, be sure to do that. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. I will see you next time. Bye.